Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar today. I'm Genevieve Johnson. I'm the coordinator for the Desert LCC. Um, for those folks on the phone, I just wanted to, to let you know that um, we are recording the webinar. Um, and we will make sure that it is posted on our YouTube channel if you missed anything or you'd like to share it with anybody later. In the software that you have, um, you can notice that up at the top of the screen there's a little person. You can raise your hand there and click on next to your name. I'll be monitoring our chat box so that if you have any questions along the way, we can call on you and we can get those questions answered. And with that, we will go ahead and get started. So again, hello and welcome to the webinar hosted by the Desert LCC. Um, today we have presenters from the Bureau of Reclamation and the Water Resources and Planning Office within Policy Administration who will be presenting on programs within um, WaterSmart and our WaterSmart data visualization tool that helps provide information visually about those programs that might be of interest to our partners. Avra Morgan has worked for the Bureau of Reclamation since 2004, and she's led quite a few teams that have developed many of the programs that you'll hear about today. She currently oversees the Cooperative Watershed Management Program. And she a water, was a water rights attorney before joining Reclamation and has a JD from the University of Colorado. Catherine Dahm is also with us this morning. She's worked for Reclamation since 2010 um, and works on water smart programs, including the basin studies, the title 16 water reclamation and, re and the Title 16 water reclamation and reuse program. She holds a PhD in civil engineering, and Darian Mayhorn is also with us. He's the coordinator for Reclamation's Drought Response Program. He coordinates and communicates with stakeholders and internal staff to support planning and implementation of actions that build long-term resiliency to drought across the West. He's worked for Bureau of Excavation since 2010. He's also worked for Army Corps of Engineers in the Argonne National Laboratory, and he holds an MS in Civil Engineering. So I will turn the webinar over to Avra, who will get us started, and we'll go ahead and kick it off. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Avra Morgan from the Bureau of Reclamation. I thought we would um, introduce ourselves. There are going to be three speakers. Um, Genevieve told you a little bit about us, but I thought it would be nice for you to hear, hear us introduce ourselves in our own voice. So I'll pass it over to Catherine. Good morning. Uh, this is Catherine Dawn. I work with Avra Morgan in the, the Water Resources Planning Division here in Denver uh, in Policy and Administration. And this is Darian Mayhorn. I also work with Avra and Catherine in Water Resources and Planning and Policy Administration. All right. Without further ado, we will get going. Uh, so we are going to talk to you today about our Water Smart program. Uh, this program primarily includes cost-shared grant programs that provide assistance for water management improvement projects and planning. Uh, many of our programs include funding for environmentally oriented projects and conservation projects that we thought might be of interest to the partners in the desert LCC. So we'll, um, we'll provide a little bit more information about some of those programs uh, than some of the others. So first, just a little bit about the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, the Bureau of Reclamation delivers water and power across the 17 western states. You can see our mission statement there on the screen. We manage, develop, and protect water and related resources in an environmentally and economically sound manner in the interest of the American public. There's some fun facts about reclamation up on the screen. Uh, we are the nation's largest wholesale water supplier, and we operate 337 reservoirs. We're the second largest producer of hydropower in the United States, and we deliver 10 trillion gallons of water to people uh, more than 31 million people each year. And we manage with partners 289 recreation sites that have 90 million visits annually. Uh, the desert, I'm sorry, the Re Bureau of Reclamation is also a partner in the desert and southern Rockies LCCs. Um, we are co-leaders, I guess, at least at the beginning of the LCCs, that's how we describe ourselves, with the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, in both the desert and the southern Rockies. Um, 
You may be wondering how, um, you know, what our nexus is and to those LCCs. And in general, the Southern Rockies and the Desert LCC boundaries collectively overlie the Colorado River Basin, which is extremely important to Reclamation's mission of delivering water and power in the West. So Water Smart. Um, the Water Smart initiative was a secretarial initiative that was started in 2010. It built on some ex existing programs that Reclamation has, and it also incorporated some new programs. I just saw a little chat that said that the sound is cutting out. So I'm going to try to speak a little closer to the microphone and see if that helps. Um, in general, WaterSmart provides a framework for the Department of the Interior to support water supply su sustainability for multiple water uses through collaboration. Reclamation and the um, USGS are both partners in WaterSmart. So in December of 2016, Reclamation issued a progress report on WaterSmart. This is a good resource about our programs. It's available on our website. Um, and it also is going to provide some of the organization for our uh, presentation today. So I thought I would just briefly walk through how that report is organized and what's in it. It's intended to be an accomplishments report that it describes for folks what we're doing in each one of our programs and where we've come uh, since 2010, uh, and along with some, I guess, links to uh, the data visualization tool where people can see what's going on with each one of our projects. So the report is organized, as shown on the slide, with an overview describing the roles of Reclamation and USGS to implement WaterSmart. Um, it's got a section on each one of Reclamation's WaterSmart programs. It's got a section also on the USGS water availability and use programs. And then uh, at the end, the conclusion of the report talks about some new program components that, uh, that were adopted recently, and we'll talk about those at the end of our presentation today also. So the thing I'm most excited about is our WaterSmart data visualization tool, which was developed as a companion to that WaterSmart report. It's got interact it's basically an interactive web-based platform uh, for people to be able to access information about WaterSmart programs and projects. It includes interactive maps. Uh, featured project tours, and it shows how the program has grown over time. Um, so we'll also be using that today as we walk you through some of our programs. So before we d dive into uh, the details of the programs and the visualization tool, just a brief overview for you. You can see on the diagram that's showing on the screen right now that WaterSmart basically includes six components. Um, these are all programs that are focused on improving water management, and they're all focused on working with stakeholders and partners to help make these improvements. We have our basin study program, which actually for reclamation, uh, the landscape conservation cooperatives and our funding for that, that program is underneath the line item for the basin study program. We have our Title 16 water reclamation and reuse program, our water smart grants program. Um, that's the program actually with the most cost share funding available under it, and we'll talk uh, in a little bit about some of the opportunities under that program. The Water Conservation Field Services Program, the Drought Response Program, and the Cooperative Watershed Management Program. So as I mentioned earlier, these are primarily cost shared grant programs, not all of them, um, but for the most part, they all are competitive. We use grants.gov and provide funding opportunities on grants.gov. They, um, they all include a cost share, a non-federal cost share, and they're open to non-federal partners. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the eligibility under each program as we go through it. Um, and with that, I think I will hand it over to Catherine Dom, and she's going to start off talking about some of these programs and using the visualization tool to guide us through. So we'll pause here for a moment while I transfer over to Catherine. All right, good morning. 
So I'm going to switch out of the, the presentation we're giving and take us over to our WaterSmart data visualization. Uh, this data visualization tool is accessible from the WaterSmart website. Um, it's, a, it's a link that we have associated with our WaterSmart progress report. And this is sort of the home page for the data visualization. Uh, it takes you here and gives you an overview of what's in the data visualization. It also provides a link to our WaterSmart progress report. And what it's really meant to do is provide a central platform to access information on all the various WaterSmart programs. So this tool was created uh, really to help our partners identify opportunities for collaboration in their areas, as well as potential grant opportunities. Uh, this is to help support you know, water management activities uh, to cost effectively develop water for the Western United States. We're going to walk through the way that this data visualization tool is set up. It's organized by program. And uh, the way that you access the different components is uh, there's a number of ways. You can scroll down on the screen. Um, you can actually click a link within these different program categories to take you to the various programs. And then there's also buttons on the right that help you navigate to different areas. Uh, the nice thing about this tool uh, is that it's a web-enabled um, geospatial tool that allows us to interactively look at different maps and load additional information on all the different WaterSmart programs. So I'm going to start us out, and I'll talk about the Basin Study Program and then a little bit about our Title 16 program. Then I'll hand it off to Darian, who's going to talk about our Water Smart Grants and the Drought Response Program. And then we'll go back to Avra, and she'll talk about the Cooperative Watershed Management Program um, and sort of a summary of, of what we talked about today. So to get us started, I'm going to go ahead and click on the links for the Basin Study Program. So as Avra mentioned, there are three components to the Basin Study Program. Uh, the basin studies themselves, uh, they're comprehensive studies, they're cost shared with stakeholders. Uh, they identify water supply and demand imbalances in different river basins. Uh, they look at future stressors like population growth and climate change. And they really develop collaborative adaptation strategies for meeting future water demands. The second activity under the basin study program are the westwide climate risk assessments. This is actually one of the activities that is internal to reclamation, but it's focused on risks and impacts to reclamation's operations, as well as support and foundation for planning studies like the basin studies. And what we have here um, within the data visualization is a map that shows all of the different locations of the basin studies and the uh, Westwide Climate Risk Assessment Impact Assessment. So when you click this blue button, it opens the map on the left pane. Uh, in the left pane, we have the three, act three activities that are listed here. Um, I'm going to focus by starting first on the basin studies and the impact assessments, and then I'll mention our reservoir operations pilots. They're one of the new activities that we initiated in 2016 under the program. And what this interactive map allows you to do, and I'm going to reduce the legend here and zoom in a little bit. So it allows you to actually interact with information on all the different studies. Uh, the, the red outlines uh, with the, the red shading, those are our basin studies. So I'm going to click on the Colorado River Basin Study that was uh, selected in 2009. Uh, there's some information on the basin study itself. Uh, there's a photo uh, that's related to the basin. And this allows us to provide some information on all of the different studies that have been conducted. Uh, to date, we have uh, we've initiated 25 different basin studies, and we've completed 15. This is one of the ones that's been completed. We also have on this screen, uh, in this legend, these black outlines with the uh, hashed uh, shading. These are our Westwide Climate Risk Assessment Impact Assessments. They're foundational studies for the basin studies. Uh, this one in the upper Rio Grande uh, was selected in 2011. Uh, we conducted it. Um, in partnership with uh, Sandia National Labs and the Army Corps of Engineers to look at um, impacts of climate and hydrology changes on operations in the upper Rio Grande Basin. And then the last, uh, last feature on this map uh, that isn't actually shown as a polygon are these points. And these points are actually uh, just central locations of our reservoir operations pilots. Uh, we initiated uh, reservoir operations pilots in 2016 to look at improving uh, reservoir operations and looking at risks and impacts to operations um, in five different locations across the West. So we initiated a study in each of the reclamation regions. This is one in the upper basin. It's focused on 
uh, looking at long-term um, drought and impacts of prolonged drought, specifically at Lake Powell and hydropower production. Uh, the pilot looks at how we can manage water within the upper basin reservoirs, uh, like Fontenelle and Flaming Gorge and Navajo, which sit above Glen Canyon Dam, and move water down um, to Lake Powell to sustain hydropower production during a drought um, and still not have any negative impacts on any of our um, environmental flows and uh, records of decisions within the basin. The other pilot, and I'll just mention it because it's part of the desert LCC, is in the Salt and the Verde Rivers. Uh, we're actually working in this, in this pilot with the Salt River Project. Uh, we're looking at climate variability and changes in hydrology in the basin, looking at the differences between variability and potential changes in climate uh, to look at how we can better inform our reservoir operations. Uh, we're looking at long-term planning, conjunctive management of groundwater and surface water in the basin to deal with drought. Uh, in the future, and then we're also looking at impacts of reservoir sedimentation on the uh, Salt River Project system. So all of these, uh, these different pop-ups have links. You can click for more information. This is a link to our pilot initiative page, and you can um, you know, find fact sheets on all the different pilot studies. So the data visualization tool is dynamic and allows you to sort of dive into additional information. Uh, this is just an overview of the first two activities under the Basin Study Program. As Aubrey mentioned, the Landscape Conservation Cooperative, the Desert and the Southern Rockies LCC make up the other, um, the other activity under the Basin Study Program. Uh, so what we've done here is we've created a web map that shows both the Desert and the Southern Rockies LCCs and the LCC projects. So all the 73 projects that have been funded since 2009 um, are, are visible on this map. Uh, I'll click on one as an example. Uh, this is from the Southern Rockies LCC. It's a decision support platform uh, that was created for the Colorado River Basin. These links actually link up with the Desert and Southern Rockies LCC um, website. Uh, this one I'm highlighting mainly because uh, the, desert, the Desert and the Southern Rockies LCC really provide uh, scientific tools and, and, and data and platforms and decision support information for all of our other planning programs and other activities within the Basin Study Program, but also more broadly, uh, which folks will talk about later. Uh, this specific project is focused on um, adding a decision support platform that um, adds different tools to the Colorado River Simulation System. Uh, the Colorado River Simulation System is the long-term planning model that we use in the Colorado River. Uh, we use it for operations planning, but we also used it for the Basin Study that was conducted to look at future water supply and demand in the area. So I'll hop back to the data visualization. Uh, those are the, the three components under the Basin Study Program. Uh, and I'll scroll down and take us to the Title 16 program. You'll see as we change screens, the, uh, the, the photo on the left changes to be representative of the type of activity that's being conducted under that program. Uh, so the Title 16 program, uh, provides uh, cost-shared funding uh, for uh, construction projects, feasibility studies, and research related to water reclamation and reuse. Uh, that's a critical part of our Water Smart program because recycled water and uh, alternative water supplies are commonly available uh, during times of drought. So the Title 16 program has a similar map um, that you can explore and see the different projects. I'm going to pass it on along to Darian Mayhorn, who's going to talk about the Water Smart Grants and the Drought Program next. All righty, thanks, Kathleen. Um, so now we'll talk about the Water Smart Grant. As Barbara mentioned, this is our program with probably the most cost share funding. Um, those cost share grants are primarily for on the ground construction um, for conservation and efficiency projects. Um, the eligibility for these grants is limited to states, tribes, water districts, conservation districts, or other organizations with water power delivery authority. Uh, the water energy efficiency grants have been funded since 2009, and these projects are for those that address water conservation, energy efficiency, 
renewable energy and benefits to endangered species. Um, so for example, projects that improve habitats or install fish bypasses and fish screens. Um, this year we also have two new categories of funding on the WaterSmart grants, small-scale water efficiency projects and water marketing strategy grants. So now I'll show you guys the map of WaterSmart grants. This shows the 295 water and energy efficiency grants that have been selected since 2009. And similar to what Catherine showed, we can zoom in to certain areas and we can highlight projects of, of interest. Um, let's see, it's loading here, so I'll choose one here. Um, so as Catherine showed, it you know, provides us information about the program and the specific funding opportunity as well as the name and the location of the project. Uh, so this is a water energy efficiency grant with Coachella Valley Water District. Um, it was an $8 million project and what they did was convert 18,500 feet of concrete pipe to PVC pipe. Uh, and this implemented an adaptation strategy from the Colorado River Basin study. So again, this functionality is the same where you can go to different different projects and, and kind of learn more about uh, the status of that project, how much funding was proposed the year that it was selected, and other information like that. The next program that was highlighted on that original diagram of the WaterSmart program is the Water Conservation Field Services Program. Um, that one's actually not in the data visualization tool, but I figured I'd just talk about it pretty briefly. Uh, so it was established in 1996 to encourage and assist agricultural and urban water districts to prepare and implement water conservation plans. And so funding is used um, for the development of water conservation plans and the design of water management improvements, uh, identifying water management improvements through system optimization reviews, and improving the understanding of water conservation technologies through demonstration activities. And so Applicants can use the Water Conservation Field Services Program to get planning efforts done to identify water management projects um, that they can then seek construction funding assistance through WaterSmart grants or the Drought Response Program, which we'll talk about here next. So I'll scroll down, and as you can see, as Catherine mentioned, picture changes to highlight that we're in a different program. So the drought response program, uh, well through the drought response program, Reclamation provides assistance to water users for drought contingency planning and actions that build long-term resiliency to drought. So this is accomplished through three different uh, program components, drought contingency planning, drought resiliency projects, and emergency response actions. And so here we have the map of drought contingency plans and drought resiliency projects that have been selected since 2015. And as you can see, the drought contingency plans are represented by their planning area. And so that ranges from statewide plans like the state of Washington here um, to more regional plans like the Lower Platte River drought contingency plan in Nebraska, uh, and then even to more specific or individualized plans uh, like the one taking place at the Dolores Project in Southwest Colorado. And again, they all have the, the same functionality with the pop-up box. The dots that you see represented on the screen are the drought resiliency projects. And again, it has the kind of same functionality. So the, the drought resiliency projects uh, really have, I guess, two different, well, excuse me, three three different focuses. Uh, projects that can increase reliability of water supplies um, that may take place through system modifications and improvements such as intertides or new conveyance system components. It could be projects uh, that provide protection for fish, wildlife, and their environment uh, such as fish screens, ladders, and bypasses, uh, restoring stream banks, improvement of habitats, 
And then it can also be projects that improve water management through decision support tools and models. And so, for example, they could even develop a tool that establishes baselines to evaluate and address ecological health and minimize adverse effects. So here, I'll click on the Explore Featured Projects. And this is something that we have for um, all of our different WaterSmart programs. Um, and what this really does is it highlights the array of different uh, project types that are selected under our various programs. And I think it also highlights the geographical um, and even the organizational diversity across the different applicants. And so just show you qu quickly how it works. Um, so click the first one and it zooms in to that project. Um, this is the state of Washington. They're updating their drought contingency plan. It provides a photo, which you guys can all see here, a lovely photo. And then it has a description of what's taking place. And then if you click here, it goes to the next one, East Bay Mud, who is also developing a drought contingency plan. Um, Semi-Tropic Water Storage District, again, it just shows the different projects across the 17 Western United States that have been selected. Um, and some of the, the different efforts that are taking place under the program. Catherine mentioned similar to the uh, map, we also have here feature projects if they're relevant links. Um, so for this feature project, there's a link that takes you to a super cool video, which I would recommend you guys all check out. And then um, there's also links to um, the actual data, right, the actual tool or, or, or product that was created through the grant. And with that, I will hand it back over to Avra to talk about the Cooperative Watershed Management Program. Hi, this is Avra again. Um, the Cooperative Watershed Management Program I thought might be of particular interest to the LCCs because it's focused on watershed restoration and local planning, I'm sorry, yeah, well, local planning and conservation projects. Um, it's one of our newer programs. It, um, it was initiated in 2012 and it's got two parts to it. Um, we call them phase one and phase two. In phase one of the Cooperative Watershed Management Program, watershed groups can apply for funding to actually get established and build capacity. Um, these are two-year projects. They can ask for up to $100,000 in reclamation funding. And lots of different entities are eligible to apply. Um, for the purpose of forming one of these local watershed groups. Um, the funding can be used in phase one to develop a watershed restoration plan and to um, put in place articles of incorporation, a mission statement, uh, do outreach, and basically get established. Um, in phase two, which is brand new in 2017, these watershed groups um, and they don't have to have been formed under our program, but existing watershed groups can apply for funding for on-the-ground watershed management projects. Um, so these projects can uh, focus on lots of different types of conservation efforts, uh, including things like stream bank restoration, stream bed restoration, uh, projects that address riparian vegetation, uh, projects that address water quality impacts, um, that were caused by wildfires or mining um, waste or um, other types of problems, uh, water quality issues. They can also fund uh, water conservation type efforts and a whole variety of different on the ground conservation projects. Up on the screen here, uh, we're showing the projects that we've funded under phase one of the program. So these are watershed groups that have been established since 2012, and some of them are in the desert LCC. Um, we, we actually ask these folks when they apply for our funding whether they've been in contact with the LCC, um, 
And we thought that that would be a good way to get these local conservation groups at least aware and focused on what the LCCs are doing and how they might uh, interact with them and maybe um, draw some attention to the LCCs and the resources that they provide. So I just clicked on one of these groups. It's the Little Colorado River Watershed. Um, it was uh, selected back in 2016, and it's just in the process of getting formed. There's another one, the Upper Verde River Watershed uh, Protection Coalition. 2012 project, that one's completed, um, and the Clean Colorado River Sustainability Coalition down there uh, between Arizona and California. Um, so this program, I think, does provide an opportunity for some LCC partners, if they happen to be engaged in watershed group activities, to apply for funding um, for kind of restoration, conservation-oriented projects. Some of our other programs also include that type of funding. Like Darian mentioned a minute ago, the Drought Response Program, I think, is also a good uh, place to look. The difference there is that to be eligible for the Drought Response Program, you need to be a state entity or a tribe um, or a municipality or some kind of entity with water delivery authority. Um, however, we always tell people that it's fine to partner and cost share can come from lots of different entities. There's no restriction on who can provide cost share. So if you can find a state agency or a municipality or a county or um, a city that wants to apply for a grant and you're an entity within the LCC, um, you could partner with them and provide cost share and be part of the project um, through that route. I'm just going to click down here showing you what's next in our data visualization tool. This is the page that provides some links to the U.S. Geological Survey uh, and some of their programs, including their water census information. And you can see the big button here. If you click on that, you can go right to the USGS National Water Census Data Portal. Um, and there's also a link to the USGS uh, National Water Use Science Project. And you can click on a link to that as well. That, I am going to hand this back over to Catherine for a minute here and just bear with us. All right, I'm going to wrap us up at the end of the data visualization tool just to talk about uh, one of the features that we tried to build in to help entities that are looking for more information on specific projects uh, sort of search through and find out more information on all the programs. So this is sort of our concluding uh, sort of chapter in the data visualization. Uh, this map here, the search map for all WaterSmart program activities, it's a nice way for uh, folks that are interested in looking for a specific project or information on a specific location to take a look at all of the different grant programs. Uh, that we, we mentioned. It's a nice, uh, this is a nice map because you can actually uh, add, and, uh, add and remove different types, of, uh, different types of layers on the map. You can uh, you know, take off, say, the basin studies or put the layers back on. I'm going to go ahead and leave all the layers on, but what this map allows you to do that the other maps um, don't have this feature is to actually search for specific projects. So I'm going to zoom us in a little bit just so that we can see the Western US a little bit closer. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the search bar up here uh, to take us to look at specific types of projects. Uh, so there's a nice way to really search for uh, you know, different, different locations around the, the US. You can search for specific uh, locations by name. Um, so you could search, say, for the city of Phoenix, um, and it'll take you directly to the city of Phoenix, just like a Google map would or a, um, you know, a, a map on your computer. Uh, this also, though, allows you to search by project type and project name. So what I'll do, um, because both uh, Aubra and I highlighted projects um, in the Verde River, is I'm going to search uh, Verde, which will bring up uh, two different activities that we have uh, associated within the WaterSmart program. So this is the reservoir operations pilot uh, that I clicked on earlier. And here's the Upper Verde River Watershed Protection Coalition project through the Cooperative Watershed Management Program. Now, the nice thing about this function is that if you're interested, say, in the um, Upper Verde River Watershed Protection Coalition, you can click on the coalition 
and it'll take you and it'll zoom in and show you, you know, what the boundary is. Um, again, it'll open automatically information about the project. But we find, what we find is that a lot of folks use this uh, to sort of locate themselves and determine what types of activities are going on in the area. So I zoomed in specifically um, to this, this area in Arizona. You can see that this, uh, this red outline is the Colorado River Basin Study, uh, which also spans, uh, you know, spans this area. The Reservoir Operations Pilot is down here. Um, but you can see the other types of grants maybe that have been um, funded in the area. These are water and energy efficiency grants uh, that have been funded within the region. Uh, so it's a nice way to take a look at all the different types of projects and see them together. Uh, we really see WaterSmart as a collection of programs that help manage, um, you know, help improve water management and sustainability in the West. And this shows how all the different programs sort of work together and contribute. So this is just a feature that allows you to search the different programs. The very final piece of the data visualization is a link to uh, our website where you can see the funding opportunities. There's also a link here um, to our reclamation website that uh, allows you to provide any feedback, um, make requests if you're interested in any specific activity. Uh, this data visualization is uh, something that uh, we put together as part of this report, but we continue to improve. Um, we'll be adding the 2017 funding. Uh, Zarian mentioned we have our Water Conservation Field Services Program, so we're looking at adding additional information on all the different uh, programs uh, that, and activities so that folks can have a central location of taking, taking a look and looking through them. I'm going to hand this back over to Avra, and she's going to uh, finish up. I think we'll, we'll talk just briefly about some of the new funding opportunity announcements and, uh, and some of the new activities that are going on in WaterSmart. Thanks, Catherine. So we thought we'd highlight for you just a couple of the funding opportunities that, that are newer and some of the things that are still open even this year. Um, this slide shows you our various programs and it explains what's new. Um, in, in 2017, we added an aspect to the Basin Study Program that allows people to apply for funding to update an existing Basin Study. Again, these are basin-wide water supply and demand type studies. They're super collaborative. They are intended to involve all partners within the basin. And we've, we've found that uh, at the end of these studies, many of them morph into next steps that are being initiated by the folks that were involved in the study. And there's often a demand to add information, whether it's um, new projections of water supply or demand, or perhaps a slightly different geographic boundary, or adding a new partner. Um, the Title 16 Water Reclamation and Reuse Program. Um, Catherine, I'll let you just touch on what those funding opportunities are. So we have three funding opportunities under the Title 16 program in 2017. Um, unfortunately, all three have closed, but they do typically uh, come out in the October and November timeframe, close in the December, January timeframe. The three funding opportunities we had this year for the first time, um, we actually had all three announcements. We've had them all in the past. The first is uh, funding for construction of authorized Title 16 projects. So those are construction of water reuse projects. Uh, the second was funding for feasibility studies to develop um, new, uh, new projects, so feasibility, looking at the feasibility of a new water recycling project. And the third was to fund research into water reclamation and reuse. Um, that focused on um, everything from looking at planning-related research to developing um, a market for water reclamation and reuse or understanding the economics or potential uses in the basin to looking at upgrades or improvements to existing facilities or deployment of technology at new locations for new facilities. And I'll mention that these are typically um, yearly funding announcements. So every year we, we post, we try to post our funding opportunities earlier in the year in the fall. Some of them um, spill over into the spring. Um, and we do have a slide coming up that shows the status of all the funding opportunities and what's open and what's not. The next program listed up here is our Water Smart Grants program. Um, there are a couple of new opportunities that Darian mentioned. I'll just touch on the water marketing one. Um, we actually just posted a funding opportunity for the water marketing strategies on February 14th, and it closes uh, in April. And this is to provide funding for um, 
folks to conduct planning activities to either establish a water market or expand an existing water market, or even to support um, a small group of water marketing transactions. Uh, the idea here being that um, through trading and uh, allowing flexibility to transfer water where it's allowed under state laws, um, we can ease some of the tension over competing uses and let folks come to kind of a collaborative approach to how to um, allocate water within their area. Um, the other funding opportunity is the small-scale water efficiency projects that Darian mentioned. This one is kind of neat because it is a smaller cost share. Uh, it's a smaller amount of funding that's available under the Water Smart Grants Program. And so it's small-scale water and energy, or not energy, I'm sorry, just water efficiency and conservation projects. Um, the Water Smart Grant projects go up to, uh, is it a million dollars? And where is the small scale? What's the top? 75,000 75, uh, in federal funding, which means only a 75,000 non-federal cost share. The application process is also more simple and streamlined because they're smaller projects. Um, the field services program in 2017, we're developing a uh, funding opportunity for what we call system optimization reviews. Basically, um, smaller scale studies or analyses of a system, whether it's an irrigation district or a city, to identify, uh, it's kind of a planning project, to identify the best uh, pro projects and practices that could be implemented to uh, make the most efficient use of water. And under the drought program this year, we, um, our drought resiliency projects funding opportunity includes a funding group for projects that cost more. Um, so we, whereas in the past, we offered only up to $300,000 in federal funding for these on-the-ground projects, we're now offering a second funding group that goes up to $750,000 uh, with a 50-50 cost share, so 70, 750 federal, 750 non-federal. Um, and actually, we had a, we've had a lot of interest. We've already got the proposals under that program, and we're about to enter into our review. We were pretty happy with our response. Um, the Cooperative Watershed Program, as I mentioned, we have funding for watershed management projects, and that's new in 2017. That funding opportunity has closed already, um, but we'll hopefully be offering it again next year. And I've put a slide up on the screen that shows our schedule, shows all the funding opportunities that we offered this year, and it shows kind of highlighted in blue there the ones that are still open. Um, so you can see that the small scale Water Efficiency Projects is open until April 27th. Uh, they actually accept uh, proposals on a rolling basis, so those proposals can be submitted at any time. Water Marketing closes on April 19th, and the Desert and Southern Rockies LCCs were getting ready to post a funding opportunity for applied science projects uh, in just in the next month here, and that will close in May. Uh, so you should definitely take a look at that when it comes out, and I'm sure that Genevieve will be providing more information as we go forward. And that's really all we had for you today. Uh, we've got our contact information up on the screen here. We really appreciate your time and um, the opportunity to share information about these programs. We're always happy to answer your questions. You can feel free to call any one of us or email um, or use the visualization tool to click through. Um, with that, I think that I will uh, hand this back over to Genevieve, and thank you very much. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, we have about 15 minutes or so for questions now. Um, if you have a question, you can raise your hand on the computer by clicking in the Participants tab and hitting the Raise Hand button. Um, and we'll call your name, um, and we can get the phone. We can get the phones unmuted. Um, or if you have questions, you can also put them in just directly into the chat box. And we do have one question from Charlotte about can we send the funding schedule out? And, and I think we can do that. Alpha, if I can just get a copy of that one slide, we can get that. Uh, Jen, this is Abra, and we will happily provide that to you. Uh, we are logging back in to the webinar right now. Okay. We do have a few other people um, 
typing some comments. Give folks just a minute. Again, you can also, up at the top of your screen, hit the little person and um, raise your hand, and we can call on you. All right, um, Avra and everybody who have a question about, um, is there a match required for the Cooperative Watershed Grant Program? Yeah, so the Cooperative Watershed Program, like I said, it has two parts. So the first part, where groups we call, which we call phase one, where groups are just applying to get established and build capacity and do watershed restoration planning, there's no cost share required. That's the only program I think that we have where there's no cost share required. Um, because the idea is that these are small local watershed groups and they're trying to get established. Uh, and they can request up to $100,000, uh, again, to do things like outreach, d develop a watershed restoration plan, um, get a mission statement together and articles of incorporation. For phase two, which is the on-the-ground projects, there is a 50% non-federal cost share required. So um, if they request hundred thousand dollars for their project they would need to provide a uh, hundred thousand dollars in match and I should have mentioned this um, wherever we require a cost share contribution it can be made in cash or in-kind services so if there's staff that's going to be providing the, the support for the project to implement the project you can count those costs towards your cost share great thank you um, I do want to mention too that for those groups who are just getting started there's um, the Cross Watershed Network, which is just a group of partners who are trying to help um, new watershed groups learn faster. So, you know, being able to provide some of those um, governance documents, those kind of examples, lessons learned, that sort of thing. So hopefully that can make that process get uh, go a little bit faster and, and be um, a little bit easier for folks. And then we have another question um, from Sean. Would a project that involves surveying and mapping natural washes so that they can be preserved and protected from development qualify under any of the programs? You know, I think the best fit for that would actually be the LCC funding opportunity announcement that hasn't gone out yet. Um, there's definitely going to be a category of funding that's going to allow some mapping. I think that it could also be done under the Cooperative Watershed Program. It's just that it would probably need to be paired with an on-the-ground project in order to be competitive. Um, we do have a category that's, that's for monitoring and you know, other kinds of efforts, measurement. I think that you could probably fit mapping in there, but you'd want to have some on-the-ground component. Um, and then Kim asks if there's an announcement ready for the desert and whether or not these LCC call for proposals out yet. Um, the answer, Kim, is no, not yet. Um, we expect that announcement to go out in March, and so we'll have that. As soon as we have those, those, those firm dates, we'll get that out. Any other questions? All right. Um, well, thank you to Avra and Catherine and Darian. I really appreciate your time today. Um, I, I think, as I mentioned in the chat box, one of the things about this data visualization tool is that for the first time, I think it really brings together the different programs that Reclamation offers um, in not only a visual way, but in a more interactive way that allows folks to kind of see what's going on and what kind of projects are actually funded. Um, underneath those programs. And specifically, it also shows um, 
spatially how those projects um, interact with the Desert LCC and the Southern Rockies LCC. And one of our criteria in our funding opportunity announcements is the question about how um, projects that are being submitted um, benefit or complement or work with other reclamation activities. And so this tool actually provides a pretty quick way for folks um, to figure that out, also to be able to find out contact information, um, be able to do some outreach um, with others who are doing work with the Bureau of Reclamation. Um, as the LCCs um, also develop these kind of visualization tools, um, you know, we'll be working more to integrate how these different pieces fit together and how we can bring those resources to the table to make sure that the work that everybody's doing on the ground um, is a little bit easier, um, that the resources are the available, and that hopefully we can collectively have an impact um, on conserving those natural and cultural resources. Um, so again, thank you to everybody for participating this morning. As I mentioned, this webinar has been recorded. It'll take us a few days to get it up on YouTube, but it'll be available there um, if you need to share it with anybody. Uh, if you need to, again, contact um, Avra, Catherine, or Darian, their information is at the end of that slide, um, or you can just send me an email, and I'll make sure that you get in touch with them. Um,